in all of his brashness, Gary V has it figured out with the whole jab, 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 right hook, like mm -hmm. give value, give value, give value. He doesn't need the money from the book, Yeah. but he does it because it's a labor of love. And that's why his stuff is so sticky. Like you can, you can sense the people, even in my own stuff, I've noticed the stuff that I put out that doesn't get any sort of traction. I know why I just don't want to admit it. It's because it seems needy or coerced or a little bit inauthentic. The stuff where I can just give two shits, man. I'm like, fucking don't care. That, that's the stuff that people gobble up. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a very real energetic thing. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. I am your host, Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. And today we've got Bryce Prescott, and all of us are Sales Wolves. Ow! Ow! Yeah! I had to play along. I didn't Thor. know if I was supposed to or not, yeah, so I had we, to do it. That I did not prep you for. That Thor was down there going, yeah, we what's got our, we going got the, on? We got the sales wolves down below us, the Rottweiler, and he was uh, a little confused. This is episode 81 of the Sales Wolves podcast. Obviously, we've got a guest, and we'll get to that, but uh, why don't we do this podcast, Where do his treats go? Over here. I'm going to make him lay down with them some. Can I have them back? You can. Do you want them? Yeah. So why do we do this podcast? What's that? Why do we do this podcast? Well, we would like to... Provide doggy treats <laughs> to <laughs> uh, for salespeople. So, and we believe that everybody's a salesperson. So, the reason that we do this podcast is two reasons: one, to provide tactical information for people that are in sales or that don't know they're in sales, mm -hmm. to that they can implement on a daily basis in their lives to gain greater success in whatever they're selling. We believe everybody's a salesperson, from the stay-at-home dad or mom to the doctor that you go see when you have the flu. Everybody has to sell themselves every single day if they want to progress in life and if they want to live a happier, more fulfilled life. So we want to give kudos and appreciation to those people. And the ones that are near and dear to our hearts are the actual people that are pounding the pavement and in sales uh, as a career. Mm -hmm. And we not only want to provide them that tactical information, but also appreciation. Yep. And thanks for doing what you do because nothing happens unless, uh, unless somebody sells something. Nothing happens unless someone sells something. Absolutely. So getting to our guest today, Mr. Bryce Prescott. So I met Bryce uh, a couple months ago out at a podcast festival. That's how I start all of my stories. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Back at a podcast those, band camp. Those, those actually exist. And, um, and we did, we had no, I had no context of you before that. And I don't think you had any context of me before that. And, and I just saw this guy up on stage, had a fresh pair of Jordans on, had a fresh hat on. Uh, a V-neck, which is kind of my style, <laughs> which is kind of my style, and I was like, man, this looks like a guy uh, that I'd like to get to know, not in a weird way, not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, <laughs> I think he's very handsome, actually. <laughs> so actually, we got to know each other um, at that podcast, spent some time together with uh, Colby K and TJ and a couple of other people that were at that uh, festival, and then stayed in contact, met back up again at at uh, Meltdown in the Desert, another awesome event uh, headed up by Colby K. And not Steve to be Fielding. confused with the Burning Man. And not to be confused, which is what Joseph thought we were going to. That's what was, I thought we were going to. Was, I was like, Damn, both, both events require the same uh, tests afterwards to fix you, though, so it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> he was really confused when uh, when he saw the, everyone else's attire. And <laughs> I was like, dude, I was planning on being naked. I hardly brought any clothes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but man, from the from the very first moment that I that I met Bryce. He was just extremely genuine, and it was one of those, I talk a lot about this idea of having real conversations with people and being able to go deeper, and not just this surface level, like small talk, and, and the first time we talked, the conversation was was just that, um, but he was humble um, and, and extremely genuine and, and brought a lot of value to that podcast festival, and then had him on my other podcast, uh, Breadwinner Podcast, and um, I have enjoyed listening, watching, viewing your content, um, and I've gotten a lot out of it, but more than that, I've enjoyed the transparency of the content you're putting out 
as you're going through things and as you're leveling up and as you're having these uh, breakthroughs and that you're kind of taking people on that journey with you. And, and I appreciate that because a lot of people aren't vulnerable enough to do that, especially from a coach, like the coach doesn't like to be vulnerable in front of the players, right? Right. Um, but I think that that may be the ultimate yeah. form of coaching, right? And so that's what we're going to actually get into here today in some of that uh, in the in today's topic. Uh, but what I want Bryce to do is come on and just tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, um, and really what your main focus is right now. Well, first of all, before we get into that, Tyler, I want to say thank you for having me on your show, uh, Joseph. You as well. Um, I felt the same sort of things when I first met you. I'm like, this guy, I had heard about you from Ever Gonzalez, the main organizer of the Outlier Podcast Festival, and started watching a little bit of the Breadwinner uh, podcast before you showed up there, and, and Colby spoke highly of you. And it's been a fun ride, man. It's always, it seems like every time we get together, we have both deep conversations, and we have a laugh, and it's just a, it's a good thing. So, you know, thank you for having me on your show again. Um, I'm excited. So, as for your, for your audience... As uh, Tyler said, my name is Bryce Prescott. Right now, uh, my main business out of being a performance coach. I, I've deduced that my superpower is helping you to screw off the top of your head and to reprogram that inner critic that you have inside of you, that voice that sometimes pipes up and doesn't say the nice things about you. That is a mechanism of conditioning. It's it's literally like an operating system in your head. And through science and, and application, I've figured out a way to change that so that that voice becomes your ally as opposed to your foe. Hmm. And so I work in, with, with clients in a couple different capacities with that. Um, but I'm also an entrepreneur. I've, I've owned some intellectual property and some, some uh, real estate software, and I have other little things that I've got going on. But my passion is, uh, is coaching, and I do a little mood lining as well as a stand-up comic. I started doing that several months ago, and that's been a fun uh, sort of stretch that – ironically has helped my coaching in a way that I had never considered based off of some of the vulnerability you have to go through and just eating shit on stage when you first get into comedy. So How does that first taste? and foremost, I'm a coach, I'm a father, I'm a husband, uh, I'm just a, a passionate guy that loves, loves connecting with people, make people laugh and, uh, you know, leaving wherever I go better than I found it. So man, let's, let's dig right into this topic. You did a podcast, uh, recently and you discuss this topic of self-development and specifically yeah. with coaching and accountability. And it, to me, shed a little bit of a different light than I think is the typical, <laughs> the typical framework of that conversation. So let's kind of dig right in and then talk about, like you just said, how the stand-up comedy has really opened your eyes to that dynamic. Um, yeah. So kind of give everybody a little bit of a synopsis of what you talked about on your podcast, and then we can kind of take it from there. Sure. Well, the the, the short version is yesterday, I, I released it yesterday, and I, I found myself in this interesting moment of inspiration and introspection about my own craft and about the the desire that I have to, just being real, make more money in coaching. Hmm. Being that it's my main focus, uh, I, I see these different avenues that are available in the coaching business that intellectually felt dishonest to me, and I was having an emotional resistance to doing certain things as well. And within that, I found myself being taken down a path by my own coach and to some other, you know, some other mentors that I, I chat with on a regular basis that it was limiting beliefs. It was some deeper seated forgiveness stuff that I'm not ready for success and all this stuff. And in a really deep moment of clarity, I found that that wasn't it at all. It's that on a very deep level, I have a disdain for the coaching industry. Hmm. And the, the title of my podcast was the false religion of self-development. And I equated it and made a connection between, you know, not all religions, obviously, but religion in general, where there's a doctrine, there's a mantra, there's a belief structure. And then when you don't get what you want within that belief structure, that it's because of some outside reason that's most likely pointed back at you. And I would see this happening in coaching where 
Um, there was very little responsibility on the guy that was in front of the stage, the guy that was doing the training or teaching, the, the author. They would spout this information, and then it would be considered through social proofing and through uh, testimonials and, and just you know through the leverage of how that works considered fact. And then people would put these principles into, the, into motion into their lives, and sometimes it would work and sometimes it wouldn't. And the times that it doesn't work, it was always pushed back on the reader or the participant that there's something up with you. Hmm. And I, I loathe that. I hate it. I, I, I feel that the craft of coaching and mentoring, it has historical significance. I mean, throughout time, the highest achievers have coaches and mentors. Like there's something about that third party benevolent person that cares about you enough to say the things that you might not want to hear, but need to hear to give you perspectives that you need. That's a sacred thing. And then when I would go into the coaching business, I would see manipulation and malicious tactics and things basically just to get money out of you as if they were selling a trinket, but yet the product was attached to something where people actually believe in transformation and change. And I was being faced with this in real time. And I was right now, I'm actually in the process of changing up my offering and products to create more continuity and to create group coaching scenarios. And as I was writing copy and seeing the different funnels, I would find this temptation to go down that road. And I just would stop. And what was what was manifesting in my life at that point was I would these roadblocks would come up that would stop the process. And as a questioned, well, am I ready for the success? Is it, is it me? Is it, do I, am, am I doing this wrong? And, and it was in that moment of clarity yesterday where I'm like, no, it's not of any at all. I don't want to succeed in that realm because I don't like what it is. Mm-hmm. I get to figure out something that works for me that is truly a win-win for everybody. And if that means that I coach less and I have my side hustle, make me more money, that's what it means. I've got to stay in integrity with this so that I'm not part of the problem. I'm a part of the solution when it comes to the coaching, coaching industry and the coaching craft. So that's a, that was a perfect synopsis. So let's dig a little deeper into that. My first thought was, do you, do you feel just like you said, am I going to have to take the coaching to a lesser degree and then have the side hustle pick up on the, on the compensation? Do you think it is the scaling of the coaching? That's the problem that they're not able to have that more hands-on accountability Uh, with people to be able to hold them accountable and for them to actually grow and for there to be a responsibility on both sides? That's a great question. And I think that the, the, my answer anyway, is somewhere in the middle with that. Up to this point, I've, my entire coaching uh, portfolio is just one-on-one. And the success that I've had with my clients has been phenomenal. I mean, Every single client during the time that they've worked with me has had massive transformation, massive growth in their relationships. They've made more money because they show up in their business as a better version of themselves. They get new mindsets attached to their to growing new skill sets. They learn how to communicate better. All these things that the, the, the information is already out there. Like I don't teach anything that's new. Hmm. It's just organized in a fashion and presented in a way with a – a growth metric for accountability where it's, we start foundationally and build upon it instead of reading some book and you're two days done, two days later, you're done with the book and you have all the information in your head, but you don't have any of the mechanisms to help you to apply it, right. execute course, correct question was frustrating and not like, and so I felt that the best for me is to work one-on-one. If I'm going to have my name attached to somebody as a coaching client, I want to make sure that they are a walking example of success in their life. And so the scaling part of it has been interesting because I, I haven't exact, I'm, I'm still in the middle of this process guys. Like I, I don't know exactly where I'm heading with this specifically, but I know that I'm resistant to being it at mass for the sake of just having a bunch of money when it has to be a fair exchange of value as far as what they're paying with what they're getting. Hopefully they're getting more than what they're paying for. I like to have it be a little bit lopsided as far as the, the exchange of value. And additionally to where there's, still protections and things in place to help them to not get in their own way. And so I don't, I don't know the specifics. Scaling, scaling, I don't think is as big of a problem as it is about the marketing aspect of telling a story of transformation and how dishonest that can be. And that's been where I'm at. I'm okay to have a bunch of clients as long as everything else lines up. It's about the telling the story to get those clients in the door so that they're, 
expectations are set. They're, 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 they don't yeah. have some out of whack idea that they've been painted on a dream that they're never going to get and causing, you know, delusion. And, and ultimately, again, going back to this damage to the industry, the craft that I love and find so important. So I think one element of that, and, and, and that was a great response as far as the, the scalability, but I think one, one element of that is the ability to truly look out for the the client's best interest and what i've seen in coaching is this idea of i want you to succeed i want you to grow i want you to level up but only to like right here yeah this is where i am yeah only to about right here yeah and if that is anywhere planted in your brain then it inevitably is going to come out in the effort that you're putting into that process to making it to where, I mean, the, the word sheep, I mean, you think sheep, but like to where you have to keep them in the system. Yeah. Right. Like I used yeah. to look, I used to look at, um, chiropractors this way. Mm-hmm. I say I used to, I kind of still do <laughs> or a chapstick, the same thing. Like, I don't use chapstick because if I use chapstick right now, I'm going to have to use it for the rest of my life. You know, like people get addicted in chiropractors. Like the idea of a business model to me where I have to go to you, you're not going to fix me. You're just going to set up a program where I have to go to you for the rest of my entire life. <laughs> some yeah. of them aren't that way, but some of them are. Yeah. yeah. But, and I've, and I've had some, and I've had people. Maybe, who, maybe you should say, <laughs> maybe you should say drug dealer instead of a reputable <laughs> career like chiropractic. Let's use drug dealer, <sighs> drug dealer. I'm going to set it up. So you got to come to me the rest of my life if I'm dealing you drugs. AKA the pharmaceutical industry. <laughs> Why don't we just attack all the major industries while we're sitting here? <laughs> if you want, I could add in about lawyers. That's another good yeah, one. Absolutely. <laughs> Motherfuckers keep the case going forever. I mean, man. Divorce this... is a factor because of, anyway, yeah. Yes. <laughs> but I think that's got to play, that has to play a role because it's, yeah. it's, it's less profitable for you to actually have a breakthrough and go on and do your thing than it is to keep you at a certain level where you feel great about it. Like, man, I'm growing, man, I'm, man, I'm doing this. I'm reading this book and I'm going to this conference, but my relationships are still bad. I'm not making any more money. And so I have to stay plugged in. To add to that, Tyler, there's, Oh, sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to interrupt no, you. No, not at all. To, to add to that, there's, there's all these other little like small tweaky manipulations too, that are totally advantageous that aren't serving the greater good. Like, how many times, you know, for you and your audience, if, if, if they've been in a coaching, let's say they've been in a sales call environment for a coaching where they're considering taking on a new coach and being, you know, hiring somebody new. And let's say that that price that's offered gives them sticker shock and they're a little bit not prepared for it. And that it's legitimately a stretch for them. Best case, worst case, they absolutely don't have access to those resources. Mm. Okay. That then is about, oh, well, you need to drill down. You need to find what it like. It's like this manipulation thing into where, well, maybe that's not the right coach for you right now that you've got to work yeah. up to that to be able to make it work. <laughs> and because everything, you know, money rules the world, everything, it's, an, it's a key part of the coaching relationship as well. If the, if, the, if the person being coached doesn't have skin in the game, they're not going to show up with the same level of, sure. of urgency to listen. But at the same time, like it, it has to be, it can't be too much of a stretch and guilt can't be a part of the decision. It's got to be about hope and strength and, and growth, not guilt into, well, I'm going to disappoint this guy because he thinks I'm a loser because I can't come up with the money mm-hmm. or whatever it is. That's one piece. And, and to, to add to what you're saying with the growth model, that's a huge issue in the coaching industry right now. They look at, they look at these students, these clients as continuity pieces like that's somebody i can count on for the (laughs) near future for x amount of dollars in perpetuity sometimes and i have a real like problem on the integrity of that it's like there there should be no issue with a client graduating from a coaching program and going to another coach yeah you know that what? Be an issue. When, you, when you strip away all the stuff outside of profit motive and ego and everything that should be natural there's certain things i can't help people with that you probably could or somebody else could. Okay, fair enough. That means that I'm going to do what I can now and then because I feel it's more of a noble pursuit than a lot of other things, then it's okay to hand it off. 
But in the big picture, like that, that affects the bottom line. That makes it to where, you know, I've got to be willing to either be continually bringing in new leads and new clients, which brings into a marketing piece, which I'm still struggling with as well, or make less money and have a side hustle that scales the money instead of scaling the coaching business. Which really, it seems like the conversation is a value issue. Yeah. People have the wrong values. They don't see the world correctly or they don't see themselves correctly to begin with. And if they saw themselves correctly, then they would probably see the ones around them correctly. Like it's never my yeah. goal with you. It was never my goal with you for you to grow to a point and never surpass me. Mm -hmm. It was never my goal. It was my goal to try to release the God-given talents and abilities that this world had sh just continued to compress inside you. It was my goal to try to release those, to watch those in operation, because what the world needs is people that come alive, not people that make money. Yeah. It, it, I, don't, I don't care if that disagrees with anybody. Like I, I don't care what people think about that because it's, we need, and, and especially in the coaching business, right? I'm not in the coaching business, I'm in the insurance business, but I'm in the coaching business, right? Because sure. I'm sure. coaching our people to better their lives. Like, like the only way that we fix this world is through a process of love. You love yourself and it allows you to love your neighbor and then you grow yourself and it allows you to then help somebody else find those unique talents, gifts, and abilities that only they have, that I don't have that they need to release to the world. It fixes the world when you help that person release those. Now, have you paid a price? Did you have to work hard? You've paid a price to, to sit in the seat you're sitting in, mm -hmm. to own part of the company, to, to be on other ventures with us and the stuff that we're doing. You've paid a dear price for that. But that just showed commitment. Yeah. That wasn't something that, that I went, oh, let's, let's see if we can get about 20% more out of Tyler. Mm -hmm. Like that's never yeah. part of the part of the thing, but that starts with a value issue with me, yeah. not with him. Because yeah. had I been a different human, or had I been the human I was 15 years ago instead of four years ago, then maybe I would have seen him as a battery, right? Instead of the the source that could fuel others, right? It's, yeah. a, it's different, it's different. Seeing them as a battery that can fuel me as opposed to, as opposed to seeing them as a, as a unique force that needs to be released because it heals the world. I know yeah. it sounds crazy and maybe, you know, frou-frou-y, but fuck it, I'm frou-frou-y. <laughs> well, no, it, 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 sounds, it sounds great actually, Joseph. Like the way that you've described that, is in the same way the 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 reason why I have frustration and I'm I'm I've got dead aim on the industry itself right now is because it's not being looked at like that. It's looked they're they're overlaying, you know, typical business principles over the coaching craft. You know, Tyler brought up chapstick. Yep. If I own chapstick, hell yeah, I want you to lose your chapstick. That means you're gonna buy another one. Like and I don't feel a moral issue with you losing your chapstick. That's just <laughs> something that happens. It's a it's a widget, it's a use it's a reusable thing. I got no issue with that being how they make their money. When you look into something that is attached to somebody's life and in intimate exchange where you're trying to help somebody see a different perspective, it's a it's a it's a higher calling, it's a higher level of responsibility. This really came to light because of some things that I was learning in my craft of, of being a comic and being, you know, I've, I've been doing several open mics a week, writing jokes, getting comfortable in front of a crowd, seeing how to, you know, really puppet you, those puppet strings of a crowd to get them to laugh on command when I want to, when I want to do that. And I, I'm a public speaker. I'm a podcaster. I've done training. I'm a coach. My natural positioning was that of leverage when I would get in front of people. You know, I'd get in front of a room to train somebody to give us talk. Like you do those things that make the crowd look at you as somebody to look up to because you are an authority. You do that in comedy and it kills your laughs. They don't, they think you're some pretentious prick that's talking down to them, yeah. even when it's subtle. And so I struggled at the very beginning with that. What changed for me is when I realized, okay, so I got to flip this. I'm not talking at them. I'm talking to them. I'm one of them. Hmm. Unlike being in a training position of you, I'm something in comedy, I'm one of you. I'm your mouthpiece for the funny, for the weird, for the irreverent, for all of that. And what helped me to learn that was that you have to connect with your audience. You have to see through their eyes. You have to understand what they want. But I wasn't doing that same thing in coaching. I'd write this copy and I was trying to poke on the pain to get them to incite, you know, reach out to me to help to be co I was I was doing all the marketing stuff and it just felt kind of sticky. 
And then when I realized, oh shit, I'm doing this wrong. Like I'm doing this, I am talking down to them in a way by not acknowledging everything about this industry in itself, but yet still honoring the craft. And as I go forward from now, like I've, I've made a personal decision in the last 24 hours that I'm going to ramp up my side hustle a little bit so that I can be more authentic in my coaching specifically because I, I can't needing money from coaching affects the message I put out about coaching and its integrity. And so I want no part of being one of those other guys. I want to be the solution. And so all that came about is I was, you know, bombing night after night trying to learn how to tell <laughs> jokes and i realized oh these guys hate me because i'm talking down to them you dumb prick like half <laughs> even one of them it opened up a bunch of doors of realization for me it's been cool well it's almost it's almost like you, you hear all the time um if money wasn't an issue yeah what would you do well in this aspect you're saying if i wasn't concerned with the amount of money that I'm getting from you. And I just wanted to pour into you so that you could grow and you could level up and you could become the best version of yourself. What would that environment, that dynamic look like? Yeah. When you insert the monetary aspect, it changes things. Yeah. And even down to like you said a second ago, that manipulation of that sticker shock. How many times have you had someone say, well, it's, it's 15 grand. Oh God, 15 grand. I, I don't know if I can afford that. That means you can't not afford it. Like if, oh, you, hear that if you can't afford 15 yeah. grand, then you have to do this. No way. You didn't understand me. Like I, I can't, I can't, I don't have the money. If you don't have the money, you have, but I don't, I, I don't, I don't know if you're hearing me. I, I don't have, <laughs> I don't have fifteen thousand. But then you're gonna have to figure out how to get it because you have like that. That is yeah. the one hundred percent the reason why you have to do it. <laughs> and it's like, well, no, like, well, what if we could eliminate that and figure out a way to to get you into a beginner's phase or like a entry level or let me yeah. introduce you to someone. Yeah, not let me introduce you to someone. That's never probably never gonna happen. You know that but, same that same argue is crazy. You know why it feels so dirty? Because I like to refer, relate everything to um, dating. So when... Everything. everything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so You charge 15 grand for a date? <laughs> yes. And, and she would say, well, I don't want to go out with you. And I would say, well, that is exactly <laughs> why you need to go out with me. <laughs> and, uh. and see, if it doesn't work in, in an intimate dating relationship <laughs> or a marriage, then it doesn't work. Like, it's not, a good, it's not a good reason. It's a slimy reason, right? I don't want to have sex with... Well, that is exactly... <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly why you need you. You don't want to what? I don't well, know if this theory's been tested out completely at all. Give me, give me, give me an excuse. <laughs> And there, there's, we'll just... there is there is some there is some genius in the jest though like <laughs> it is it is a true thing that I'm a gesture when, when you have to use that stuff when you have to use that stuff it it doesn't it the the percentage of success when that actually works is so small like I've I've. I've used that. I'll be honest. I'll use yeah. that. Oh, this, this is more than I thought. And, and my response will be, well, good. That makes it, I don't ever say, well, then you have to, but my response has been, well, that's making you think about it then in a way that would keep you on the hook, which I'm okay with that as a response. Yeah. But when they're like, dude, I can't like, I'm that's diapers for my kid or whatever. I mean, that's a whole different level, Yeah. but <laughs> Anybody that would disagree with this most likely is on the take for this type of stuff. Sure. <laughs> like, yeah, and yeah, so it's, absolutely. it's a, and again, I, I I can't I can't live with with that. Well, and there's you. and there's this uh, there's this idea that we're all competing for the same eyeballs, like because yeah. all these coaches are big on social media because that's that's where you yeah. get your client base now, and there's this idea that that certain people have are are acting like they own the sun, <laughs> right? Like yeah. like like you said, nothing you do is necessarily uh, proprietary. It's just the way you package it, right? And so some of these people are trying to act like they've invented, like, I've invented this way of looking at life. Like, no, that's as old as time. Like, as old as time. I'm just yeah. giving you a structure and hopefully a, a, a structure of accountability to where you actually go and implement the things you already know you're supposed to do. I mean, most of the things, like, when you get into that, that relationship or you read those books, you're not like, oh, my gosh, 
this guy just told me something I've never, ever heard. Usually it's I've never heard that way. Right. Yeah. And if people, now they're holding me accountable for it. If people, the people that are acting that way, like they invented this stuff, yeah. if Napoleon Hill was still alive, he'd sue them all. <laughs> right? Here's, here's a fun fact. Napoleon Hill was broke most of his life. So how does that work? Like, Right. You know, w one of the things that I find to be... The answers are already there. The examples are already there. Let's let's for example, let's let's take you, Tyler. The, one of the very first conversations that I had with you there at the Outlier Podcast Festival was about you monetizing your stuff, mm -hmm. and you were you your biggest concern was that it was going to influence what you do and how you do it. Yep. So why doesn't that still ring true in the coaching space? That the monetization of coaching changes it. Now, I understand it's a necessary component. I'm not saying remove right. monetization out of it and we become a bunch of freaking priests. That's a bad example. A bunch of really good people <laughs> that are trying to help other people. There's but, something I wouldn't correlate to often if I was you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but but look at look at guys like, you know, for Andy Frisilla or Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, you know, yeah. you Tyler, you look at um, you know, Ed Milet. These are guys that are really successful in other areas of their lives and other industries that could give two shits. If you buy their ebook or need their book, yeah. but if you buy it, great. They, they love it, but that it's in all of his brashness, Gary V has it figured out with the whole jab, 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 right hook, like mm -hmm. give value, give value, give value. He doesn't need the money from the book, yeah. but he does it cause it's a labor of love. And that's why his stuff is so sticky. Like you can, you can sense the people, even in my own stuff, I've noticed the stuff that I put out that doesn't get any sort of traction, I know why, I just don't want to admit it. It's because it seems needy or coerced or a little bit inauthentic, the stuff where I can just give two shits, man. I'm like, fucking don't care. That, that's the stuff that people gobble up. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a very real energetic thing. And so not that you can't be extremely successful as a coach and everything, I've, I've met a couple that I would, I look at their life and their results and I know that they practice what they preach and that their, their business is an extension of that, even though it does have marketing that includes, you know, compelling copy and, and getting people to commit and all that. But uh, most of the others that I meet, I see like there's something off. There's something a little bit tweaky that I just can't put my finger on. But yet they might be financially successful and killing it and have a big following and all this stuff. But I just don't get it. And. Bryce, can I ask maybe, you a question? Maybe I'm taking on the world too big here, and it's it's at my own detriment. But I don't feel I am. I feel it's something that somebody's got to say this stuff because everybody's thinking it anyway. Bryce, can I ask you a question? Please do. Yeah. So, how long ago were we at the burning meltdown? <laughs> <laughs> how long ago was it? Was it? June twenty second. Uh, yeah. June twenty second. Two months. June, July, August twenty second. So it was two months ago. Yeah. All right. That's the first time I ever met you. Um, so what, what in the last 60 days, what in the last 60 days has been the biggest catalyst, whether that be a trauma in your life or just massive self-awareness or hell, it could be the death of somebody, a divorce. I don't know what it is. What in the last 60 days has happened in your life? In the last 60 days, something you've... You've experienced something. There's been some some form of an experience with you. So what is that? What is yeah. what is that thing? Well, there's there's been a couple of layers to that. Meltdown was an incredibly impactful or, uh, event for me, and, mm -hmm. and not in the way that I expected it. It actually, I found myself at Meltdown uh, really intimidated of a lot of the people that were there. Yep. I'm. I'm, an, I'm a very accomplished person. I I'm successful in my own right in the things that I'm great at. I'm, I'm outspoken, I'm articulate, I'm, I'm very insightful, I can see around, around corners and angles, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a great coach. But even then, I was in this room of people and found myself in the comparison mode. And it kind of put me into a spin coming out of there where I'm like, well, what is this? Why is this creeping up for me to where it's a big issue? And it, it illuminated some realizations and I expressed some things that, that uh, had mixed reviews as far as how it was received and, and I found myself in this discovery, I guess, of kind of getting underneath layers of myself that I hadn't addressed in a while. Self-awareness. What were some of those layers? I mean, you don't have to be specific. Was it family? Was it, what, what was it? Was it something you went through or? 
Well, or just part, of, part of it has to do with uh, where I was going with this is I, I ended up kind of following Tyler's lead. I ended up getting sober um, my birthday, okay. July 22nd. I stopped drinking. Okay. And I haven't had anything to drink since then. But before that, it was leading up in that I was noticing that um, I uh, my foray into coaching has been by far the least successful I've ever been in any endeavor I've ever done. Perfect. And I mean that in finances, I mean that in impact. Yep. And but it was the one that I wanted to make the biggest difference in because I came from a world where I had a real estate firm from 2008 to 2012 where I was on the right side of the mortgage crash and we flipped close to 8,000 houses in four years. I was in the commodity business, traveling the world, lining up transactions where like I, I was always a Big vision, big guy, hustler. But yet, in exchange for those things, my health went to shit. My relationships were sacrificed. I had a bunch of money, but it, everything else was falling apart. And so I got into podcasting and coaching, wanting to flip that, wanting to be like I was in shape and my relationship with my wife was good and I was in close with, with God and feeling purpose-driven. And I thought coaching was a way to do that. And it's been incredibly uh, rewarding from a personal standpoint but I've stopped at certain benchmarks, not willing to go forward based off of the things we've already discussed. That's put me in a weird place to where there's sometimes where I even feel bad about myself in the coaching space that I, I know of my own talents and, and gifts and abilities, but it should be available more, but I don't know how to traverse that gap where I don't feel like I'm selling my soul and doing it for the money. Cause that's what I got out of before I was chasing money before I don't want coaching to be something I'm chasing the money with too. And so a lot of those realizations were building up underneath the surface. And I didn't know what I was experiencing until I got sober. And then when I wasn't able by choice to sedate and to go numb and to kind of do what alcohol does, it left me many sleepless nights looking around going, what the fuck are you doing, dude? Like this is figure it. your shit out. Like feeling that I wasn't even worthy to coach at this jun juncture of my life because, dude, who are you to tell anybody how to figure this shit out when you're in the middle of one of the biggest quandaries of your life? Yep. And those thoughts, you know, were passing. I don't feel that way right now. I actually feel more in line than I felt in a long time just because I'm separating myself from the need of money respective to coaching, which in a weird way is like, making me more attractive as a coach. It's the weirdest thing. No, you, no, 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 no. That's, that's what I was going off of feeling wise. Like the guy that I'm talking to today, the guy that I'm seeing today is a hundred percent different than the guy that I met there. The guy yeah. that I met there, I, I was like, I'm not so sure about this guy. I always have a feeling about people. You have a feeling about people when you meet them. And when sure. I met you, I was like, I don't know, man. I don't know. Tyler talks good about him, but I don't know. I feel something is off. I mean, seriously, I was like, I feel something's off. Not like you're a bad person or anything no, like I, that. I'm not offended, yeah. Um, but I felt like something was off. But the person you are now, like I would send my close friends to be coached by you because I feel a deep, authentic um, connection. And I also see that you're a completely different person. There's a humility that you have right this second sitting in this chair that you didn't have two months ago and deep humility. So I knew something had happened in your life. Like you had been going through something and the stopping yeah. drinking and the coming from where you are. And I know it's never, sometimes it's never one event. Sometimes it's one event, but usually it's a lot of events leading up to a decision. And that yeah. seems to be like what's happened here. And then, and then massive self-awareness, like coming out of that decision, which is what it seems like what's happened here, man. And I'm, I just wanted to tell you, I wanted to stop and talk about that for a minute because I literally was sitting here quiet for the first 15 minutes blown away at who you are sitting there right now compared to who I met two months ago. I'm not kidding you one drop. And so, um, and the fact that you're talking about what you're talking about and the way that you want to take your business, um, I'm excited for you. I'm excited to see what happens there because I think you're going to draw the people to you. It's just going to automatically happen. You're drawing the people to you that you need to coach that your light, which you've now uncovered, is absolutely gonna shine into their lives and show them where their light is, right? So kudos to you, man. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here blown away. I really am after listening to you talk. Well, that's, uh, I'm kind of speechless. Like that's, thank you for that. That means a lot to me. My, hey. my commitment to being myself is 
it's just nice to hear it back. Thank you. That makes it that means a that means a bunch to me. Cheers. Bryce, Thank you. Bryce, you know, it seems like at the very end there, you said you're like it's so weird because like now that I'm not concerned about it, it's 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 like people are finding me more attra attractive. And I think what it, it, in my estimation of what is going on, it's it's the ego, right? Like yeah. when you can be vulnerable and 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 transparent in the stuff that you're putting out and saying that, like, there, I have no issue with being coached by someone that is currently going through struggles and is figuring it out, because those struggles are different than my struggles, they're different than your struggles, but the person that's vulnerable enough to, to put that stuff out there is the person that I want to lock arms with and level up with, right? Yeah. Versus the person that stands up there and pretends like they're perfect and they have no flaws and that you need to join my program, my mastermind, and do this because I'm the king of the world. And knowing in the back of your head that their relationships are probably in the gutter, that yep. there's all of these other areas that are going on that they're not putting on display uh, for us to really know who they even are, right? Like you're, you're yep. now in a place where you're, you're showing people the real Bryce, like this, these are the stuff that I'm. This is the stuff that I'm struggling with. Like I this is be the, friends with him now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fucking good time, dude. Even without. <laughs> Which that's a whole other topic. Is is discovering that? I, yeah. I can assure you, because uh, I've certainly dealt with that myself. Um, but yeah, man, I think I think that that's it. Like the the whole idea that hey. ego <laughs> ego ego is the enemy. And, can I and can I just add something that, that came up as I was listening to, to you talk, Tyler? Um, you know, Joseph. One of the other things I, I can't stress this enough. One of the biggest uh, blessings has been doing stand up. Yeah, it's this weird little place where it was almost like it was like the the the, the little bit of the teaser drug of being of speaking my mind. Cause I could go on stage and say some outlandish shit. <laughs> and I knew that it wasn't about what I said, it was how I said it. And I needed to set it up and I needed to say it right. But I knew underneath it all, it was the same thing no matter what. I just needed to speak to the crowd as one of them. And like the process of bombing, the process of having, I mean, lately I've had some sets where for the seven, eight minutes I've been up there, I crushed the entire time. They're eating out of my hand. And I'm realizing that you know, it's 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 been this cool sort of exercise, and I I can eat shit and commiserate, if you will, with people as they grow and they eat their own shit, and uh, that sounded bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, but yet still not have it, you know, in any way cast a weird shadow on the fact that I know my stuff as a coach. Like it's this, this crazy, like yep. I'm not weak in that I'm weak in one area, but not weak in the other area. And it opened in, in, in the lesson has been that I can talk about the weaknesses in all areas without fear of, of loss. Yeah. I, I, it's kind of funny. Part of the big epiphany that I had yesterday was I've been saying this for months that, oh man, sometimes I wish I wasn't a coach so that I could say what, what's really going on. <laughs> and last, like yesterday, I'm like, that's the dumbest yeah. price. What are you thinking? Just say it anyway. Like yeah. you're attached to you're, I, I was attached to a fear of stopping something coming that wasn't coming anyway. Yeah. So it's hmm. like, that was, that's the definition of insanity. Like and, I just kept and, doing the same shit, thinking different. So it's like, I don't even care, man. Like, and, I'm the, and the irony in that is the, the thing that you were stopping, you were stopping from saying it because you thought it would stop those things from coming is what was actually stopping those things from coming yeah. to begin with. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's, it's, uh, it's a, quite the conundrum. Quite the conundrum. <laughs> yeah. So man, this has been uh, <laughs> this has been this has been awesome. And uh, how do you want to wrap this up? Like a condom. <laughs> Oh, you want it to be quick, huh? <laughs> quick and tight. <laughs> and not leaky. Oh, jeez Louise. I don't know why I, I said that. I feel dirty. You are dirty. That's all right. Man, I That's really right. appreciate uh, I appreciate your willingness to, to get to that place. Because there's a whole lot of people, because I know that feeling that you had is a very lonely feeling. Jeez. When you feel yeah. like you when you feel like you're stuck in a structure where you can't express what's really happening because you feel like it's going to be a detriment to your business, 
that is a very lonely place. Like when you hear the bad stories of of, of suicide and, and depression and and all of this stuff, like that's where that 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 is one of the biggest, in my opinion, roots of that. When you are stuck yeah. in a position where you can't be you or you can't express the things that you're truly feeling because of what other people are gonna say, especially when it's tied to your income. Like yeah. Like justifiably so, like I can't express these things because I have to f- put food on the table. Yeah. But coming to that realization of like, oh wait, if I actually do express these things, then people will be able to relate with me more, but I still have credibility because I have done great things. I am uh, unique in the way that I coach. I, I am great at what I do. And just because I'm great at what I do doesn't mean I str- don't struggle in other areas and people being able to relate to that um, is actually what will end up bringing more income and providing more for you. I think yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see what happens uh, over, the next, from coming in. over the next uh, <laughs> <laughs> We still talking about anyway. money, money. <laughs> oh, man. Well, oh, guys, uh, so tell everybody where they can find you online. You've got the Bryce Prescott show. Yeah. And yeah, where else my, can they uh, find you? If you just, my name is just Bryce Prescott, B-R-Y-C-E-P-R-E-S-C-O-T-T. Uh, and if you just go to my website, BrycePrescott.com, I've got links for everything there. Um, I'm on Facebook and, and, you know, Instagram and Twitter and all that. I've got a couple free offerings at my website, but, uh, yeah, the Bryce Prescott show is a fun thing. It's, it's, I, I have labeled it not your typical coaching podcast. Cause I've been, I've actually segregated my episodes. I have certain episodes where I'm, it's all about comedy and laughs and sharing that part of my journey and making you, you know, saying outlandish shit. And then I have stuff that's a little heavier and coaching related self-development, you know, actual self-transformation, self-development stuff. And, uh, it's, I might be biased, but I think it's pretty damn entertaining. I try my best <laughs> to make sure that you're, uh, you're getting a good chuckle and it, it, whatever I'm putting out there. So the last thing I'll say about Bryce is you should definitely follow him on Instagram because, and I, and you, I think I heard you say something. I think I was on the live when you said that you were surprised that I had said it. But uh, I talked about him on, on one of the episodes of the vlog, and, and I talked about the fact that he does these things on Instagram stories. He calls them, what's it called? What's it called? Apple Snack, Apple... Yeah, the it? Apple Snack Chronicles. Apple Snack Chronicles, where he literally just like sets up his phone on like some type of tripod or suction cup <laughs> mount, and he just all of a sudden he walks up with an apple, he's like... Arr. So uh, here's what I was thinking the other day, uh, and like he eats an entire apple and just talks about this. It's very random. Like there's there's no like... It's just whatever's on his mind, but it's always like super authentic and real, and it's uh, I, I enjoy it. Can you do Can you do the next one <laughs> that's, with that's, a lemon? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that those are fun. I, I started as is almost like a, a comedy writing exercise because I'd find yeah. these just ridiculous stories on Twitter or something, and I'd be like, "You guys can't believe this shit," and I'll just like do it, and it's it forces it to be short. That's but why. it's I, I I've been really res- really surprised at the response, man. Like people <laughs> love those things. It's pretty crazy. That's awesome. Well, yeah. very good, man. Well, I can't thank you enough uh, for your time and for being on and for doing what you do. Um, and guys, with that, this is episode eighty-one of the Sales Wolves podcast. Again, I'm your host, Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. We've got Bryce Prescott here, and we are the Sales Wolves. Ow. Ow. Ow.